Hey guys, it's Jason at Mustang Rehab. Uh, we're back on the Bronco today. Uh, finally, after two weeks, uh, we had a little vacation, had um, parts issues. As I told you guys, we're waiting on an apron and I really couldn't move forward where I wanted to. So, um, anyways, uh, we're back in the shop. Uh, thank you guys for tuning back in and uh, let's see where this thing goes. Uh, I do want to say real quick, thanks to everybody that's subscribed here lately and y'all been telling your friends and it shows the channel's really growing and I appreciate it. It's uh, uh, kind of unbelievable how quick it grew in a week. So uh, anyways, I don't want to talk a whole lot. We want to get back into the Bronco. Just thank you. Uh, I, I do appreciate it. What I would recommend you starting first uh, as you're trying to put your fenders on is if you have your hood. Go ahead and bolt your hood up to your cow. Uh, you're going to need it to help keep your body, your, your body line square and your fender square. So you're, when you're trying to find your, your fender gap and your door gap. So you need, really need your doors hung and your hood on when you start installing your fenders, in my opinion. Some of you guys might not like that approach or, or think that it should go on better than that, but I, I just really find out it doesn't. Um, I need a visual guide to help me keep my line straight here. I'll, uh, let me get the camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. The, uh, when you first get your hood on, it, it gives you something to go by. So right now I've got my, my hood and my fender. I've got a really nice gap. You know, it's, I know it may not look consistent, but it is. It's uh, eighth of an inch, maybe just a grunt more, all the way down to the door. And then if you look down my body lines, you see how it's fitting up next to the, the new door. The top is nice and straight. You come down the side and you see it's uh, hitting the rocker real nice. So this is a real good start. So it looks good, right? Now let me show you the issues. Sorry this chair, I, I know, but that's what I have to do. All right. Look at this gap right here. That drives me bananas. I, I looked at this last night. Um, actually it was uh, talking with one of our new subscribers, uh, a guy in Utah, Nick, <laughs> I was telling him I, I started staring at this yesterday and I just had to walk away a little bit and think about it. But uh, I came back out last night and uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, what I found, that, man, that's, that's pretty crazy. Let me open the hood up here and I'll show you another spot. Okay. Here's the other issue. You know, we put in a new apron. Let's see, can you see the gap there? All right, that's the gap. Now all this is put back to the original height of the Bronco. And to me, this, this edge here, from here to here is it's just too tight and luckily when they form this thing it's uh, basically an L uh, piece of steel broke that goes up inside the fender and then they spot weld it together uh, spot weld spot weld spot weld so what I'm gonna have to do is drill these spot welds out and then I'm, they're gonna change my name to drilling out spot welds but that's what I'm going to have to do to make this fit right. You know, other than that, it, you know, the outer skin looks great. You know, again, look at that, guys. That looks, let me let's see if I can give you a little bit more perspective here. The seam, okay, I can't, I don't make fun of the ugly hinges. It's just, it is what it is right now. But the seams are good. It's just a real poor fit on that back side. This is the passenger side, and you can see I've already drilled out the spot welds here so I could pull 
this bottom edge down. That way it hits back here where it's supposed to and I can bolt it down. And uh, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about is that, you know, you, you find out. This apron fit a little bit better from uh, Dennis Carpenter. As you see, it, I can pull it, I can, I can bolt the fender down with no problem. On the other hand, this one will not. I will have to drill out the spot welds on the driver fender. On the support that bolts to the apron, to get it pulled down, there's it's just too much of a gap. Okay guys, here's the fender. Let me show you a couple spots that I had to grind. I'm sorry. Alright, this edge here, um, when I would put it in and try to push the fender into place where it would meet up with the A-pillar right, this used to have a, a little different radius to it. Um, this support here wrapped around and this went right into the a parallel uh, where the fender needed to go and there was there was just no way getting around it um, the fender wouldn't come up high enough on the a pillar to to get in line with the door so uh, so that, that was one of the places I really had to massage if you can if you can see that Part of the apron I'm talking about is like right in here, where the, the fender rolls in, and uh, that area was really tight. So I had to work that out. The rest of the fender, uh, rest of this support was actually pretty good. You know, I don't like all these square edges and stuff it has. Uh, we'll clean all that up. But for now, again, I, you can look around at the welds. You know, everything is just still rough. I, I'm, I'm not grinding it. I, I just I like to do all that one time because you get filthy. The shop gets destroyed, so we just fit right now. Well, yeah, and I, I did have to kind of work this edge in just a little bit, but you can tell where I've been beat, I beat on it just a little. But this is sort of one of those things that I can't can't tell you just one certain way of doing it because each Bronco is going to fit just a little bit different. But just keep taking your time. Uh, get the get the fit and the look right. You know the bones and the structure to it can be changed. All right, these are spot welds I was talking about. I'm going to lower this edge here about an eighth of an inch. It just this whole thing needs to drop an eighth of an inch all the way down. It bolts down pretty good. It's just it it changes as we get up here. <clears throat> See how it's already loose. And this back edge goes all the way to this upper lip. So I have a lot of material to work with there. So. Tip, when you're drilling, if you're close to your steel behind and you drop your drill bit through in a hurry, you'll dent your fender on the back side. Uh, I've done it. Okay, as you guys can see, the uh, horizontal support on the fender that goes right beside the hood has been released. Uh, I drilled out the spot welds. I left one, I left the very end one because it was actually close and that, uh, that helps me get the fender bolted back down. Now I can put the fender back on and get this bolted in place and I'll come back with my welder and I'll be able to Reweld all these spot welds, and you know it would have been nice if they would have had them a little bit closer, <laughs> you know, more in the center, 
because now when I pull it out a little bit, my, that hole's going to drop out just to grunt. But we can fix that. But this is what I'm going for right here, is just to move this down just enough where it sits on top of the apron like it's supposed to. I know about where the center needs to be because I can put my hand down here on the uh, rocker, the bottom of the rocker and the bottom of the fender, and know about exactly where the, the height of the fender needs to be. Like that. Like I've showed you guys before, I marked the apron with a sharpie where my fender goes so that I can get it back. I got the fender bolted back on. I've got the uh, spot wheels drilled out. I've got everything sort of pulled down tight against the apron. And I just, I'm being honest with you guys. I, I, I don't want you guys to, to uh, think I'm hiding something, but you see how far I had, it's lifted. Okay, That's, it's not gonna be that high. It's Right now it's completely relaxed. The fender is to the hood, but anytime you bolt these fenders down to the apron, you're gonna have a little bit of gap and it's sort of kind of putting a little bit of a load. It kind of puts a little bit of, of tension in your panel. And if you look, if I close the hood and you, and you look at this radius, this radius actually goes a little high right now in this relaxed position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie, and now everything's bolted. I'm going to mark this line in here, and I'm going to drop it about an eighth of an inch. Let me see. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull the, this loose. I'm going to take it back out, and I'm going to re-weld this uh, horizontal support here back to the fender, but I'm going to raise it up an eighth of an inch. And that'll give me just a little bit of preload all the way down Put a little bit of tension in the fender so it holds it good and tight like it should and uh and that this radius here i think will pull right down to the hood so it's it's looking good i know you guys uh may not agree with having to do this but it uh it kind of is what it is the uh the other parts are in place all of my Panels are where they're supposed to be. Dimensions are correct. So it's just, this is some of the stuff that you have to do. You, you may not have to do this to all fenders. This is an oval brand fender. I haven't dealt with them before. I know oval brand was the, the brand that was on the rockers. And we know how those turned out. Ooh. So other than that, the fender has got really nice bends and radiuses and all that kind of stuff. They, the skin looks really good. It's just the, the structural fitment part is where I've had issues. Uh, I've got the, the fender pulled off. And um, like I was telling you, I was going to mark it with a Sharpie so I knew exactly where to put this thing back. And then I'm going to take an eighth out of it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to put the seam right on top of that hole and sort of help cover it. And then I'll weld it up so you can see how much I actually moved it down. And then when I put this back on, this should put some tension in the top of this fender and uh, hold it right where I want it. We'll get the welder out and uh, get this welded and put it back in. See how it looks. Alright, uh, before I weld the uh, support back in place, these four holes uh, were sort of dipping um, a little bit too far below where they had, uh, had the original spot welds and it would just look bad so what I did is I filled the holes. I'm just going to grind them smooth. 
I'm gonna grind them smooth so I can uh, tuck that back up. And then when I re-weld it, I won't have in you know, a half a moon or an open hole sticking out behind it. And if I weld it up on the seam, you're gonna see that I welded it and it's gonna, it'll look bad. So anyways, uh, let me grind these off and we'll, we'll get started. Now when I prime this and we sand it, you know, these, you know, of course, grind marks will go away and I can, I can feel just a couple of small spots, but anyways, the holes are gone and it'll look much better. We got the spot welds in and I'm going to stick it up there and see how it fits and uh, hopefully it will be much closer than it was and we can move on. Right, I'm going to lock the, the back of the fender down the apron down the A pillar first, get it locked in place, lock the front, and then I'll pull these bolts down. I forgot to drill this. This was a bolt hole. Uh, Nick, one of our subscribers, was asking about. Well, mine, I repaired this bottom portion, so my hole, I have to make the hole, so it, uh, I wasn't any help to him. And I apologize, but. Uh, He's, he was concerned with a hole on a uh, part that he bought wasn't lining up with the fender and I think he had, had that confirmed by the factory. So uh, I'll get more information on that and let you guys know. But uh, it was a aftermarket part and uh, apparently they had the holes drilled off. <laughs> Big surprise, right? That looks really good. And so. I'm going to let Johnny show you guys. This is, uh, the hood's not sitting on the bumper. It's sitting on the steel. But if I hold it up, let's see, right about where it's going to be, if you can look down that seam, I'm talking about it is, it is right on it. And that was just me taking that little extra time cutting those spot welds out and then repositioning that uh, that support. It's got a little tension on it and, it and it pulls real good and tight against the apron. So I am, I'm thrilled with that. That looks great. Go up top, look down my body lines, look down that door. That's looking good. Yes. One fender down. All right, guys. Um, the passenger fender wasn't as bad as the driver's side. I didn't have to do as much. You know, I didn't have to drill out all of my spot welds. What happened? It was right up top. It uh, it was too it was too high, sort of like the other side was. So I had to drill out this uh, first four spot welds. So basically it'll lay down on top of the mount at the back. So I've got them drilled out. I'm gonna reach in there and tack them. And that'll get these in place. I've got my hole marked. So I can redrill that once I get the fender off again. But uh, let me show you, show them up here, Johnny. This, this side sort of has the same issue uh, with a, a gap between the radio support and the fender. Okay, here's the original fender and the new. All right, well, I, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking, well, I, I, I put something's not right for this not to be fitting like it's supposed to. Well, what's not right is the aftermarket fender. I can put the old original fender up there and it flushes up and I have the same gap. 
So right now what I'm having to do is fit this aftermarket fender to the new radiator support. And what I'll end up having to do is actually moving this piece here in. I'll have to drill out the spot welds and move it in, but I'm not gonna do that yet. I can't do that until I put on my grill. I can't put on the grill until the rotisserie's off. <laughs> I couldn't put the fender on until the rotisserie was on. I couldn't finish until I got the apron on and the fender on so I could do the rotisserie. Well, now I have to wait till I get the rotisserie off to finish the grill. I know it's aggravating and kind of weird, but when I built the rotisserie, I used what I had. I had the, the material I had and I didn't have any room to spare, so I don't have enough room up front to bolt the grill to it. So that'll have to wait. We can move on, that's no problem. But um, like I showed you, this isn't a real big deal. The drilling out the spot wells isn't a big deal. This is where I had to work this fender. On both sides, I had to work right in here and, and basically recontour that so it would lay up against that A pillar like it's supposed to. Both sides, driver and passenger, I did the same thing. Other than that, and having to, you have to sort of dolly these mounts out where the where these mounts roll. Once you get them halfway set, then you have to kind of hammer them in place. If you can see right in here, this is where I had to do some radiusing and some work on the fender support so the fender would actually lay up against the A pillar like it's supposed to. I did that on the driver's side the very same way. And then these mounts where this where the fender actually bolts to the A pillar, you know, you have to really work those a little bit. I think I had to uh, take a file to the holes and get the holes enlarged just a little bit in one spot. But um, just getting them to fit. And then I had to come back and trim all this, this tab off. They, they just did a really poor job trimming this fender. Well, there's the door gap. This door is actually fitting pretty good. It's, uh, it breaks a little wide. It breaks a little wide right in here. The gap is real good here to here, here to about midway. And then it gets good right in here, back down in here, and then down to the bottom. So right in here, my, my door seam widens up a little more than I really like. And then I can feel it in the radius that it's, it's there's something just not just right right there. So um, I'll probably end up cutting this and moving it over just a little bit. I know it's a lot of work for just to make that gap straight, but I, it's, it's a little too wide. I, that'll give me heartburn right there. All right, guys. Uh... That's welded up now. We're bolted down tight here. We're bolted down tight on the driver's side. The Bronco is bolted back to the rotisserie. And let me show you some of these sweet lines. So Johnny can look, show you down the edge here. So, yep. Got real good gaps on both sides. And walk over on the driver's side. So this is what this is what we're trying to achieve. And again, um, I'm not going to put the grill on it. Can you show this to me? You know, this being where my, my rotisserie pivot is, is almost up against the radiator support. So I, I just can't put the, the grill on right now.
but I've been checking my dimensions. That's why I have the grill laying here and measuring my opening. Make sure my opening's right. Make sure the overhang of the hood is right. So uh, I believe the next video, I'll talk a little bit about the rotisserie that I built. Uh, there some people had some, some questions on how I, how it works, uh, how do I attach it underneath, um, how did I build it, and uh, we'll talk about that. We really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in again with us, uh, watching the channel. Uh, really appreciate you guys uh, sharing us. Uh, I said at the beginning of the video, that's, that's really been a big deal. We've, uh, we've really grown this week and hope to continue to grow, and it's because you guys are, are spreading the name, and I, and I thank you very much. So like and subscribe, and uh, we'll be back next week, and and hopefully we can keep this thing going and keep the videos uh, going uh, two to three a week. So get back on a normal schedule. Well, you guys have a great rest of the weekend, and see you next week. Mm -hmm.